Hi guys, welcome to Go Tutorial Part 9. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. And today we are going to quickly implement some flash messages into our program. Now, if you don't know what flash messages are, that's probably because you've never used something like Ruby on Rails or uh, Django. Basically, flash messages are the messages that you get when you uh, try to log into an application and you fail. Things like a uh, little box will pop up and it'll say something like uh, you know wrong username password things of that nature these things come baked into Ruby on Rails and to Django and other frameworks like that but there's something that we have to implement ourselves into Go though it's not very difficult to do so let's do this uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new Go file and we're gonna call it flash.go and our flash.go file is going to be package main we're going to import our three libraries and the first one is going to be the net HTTP library the second one we need is called time which is going to allow us to time out our cookie and the last one we need is called encoding base 64 and this is going to allow us to encrypt our uh, messages so basically the way this is going to work is we are going to create a cookie and then we are going to use that cookie to pass the corresponding message to uh, the handler that we need it to go to and then we are going to delete the cookie right after it deploys the message so the first two functions that we need to make are one to encode our message so that it is encrypted when it's on the cookie and one to decode our message so that we can read it after it gets off of the cookie so our first function is going to be called encode and it's going to take in a slice of bytes and it's going to output a string so this is just going to be a one-line function and we're just going to return base64 URL encoding encode to string and then we're gonna pass in our byte basically what this is doing is it's encrypting our byte into a string and then our next function is going to be called decode and this is going to take in a string this is going to take in a slice of bytes and an error so this is just going to be very similar to our encode return base 64 URL encoding decode string s and we're gonna put our string in there and that's all we need to do for those two functions so then we need to create a function to set the message so set up the cookie that has the message on it so this function is going to be appropriately called set message inside of it we are going to pass our HTTP response writer then we are going to pass a string so let's call this name and then we are going to pass our message which is going to be a slice of bytes there's going to be no output from this particular function and that's because we are going to deploy our cookie from here so we need to create a cookie so we're going to use the HTTP cookie struct that exists inside of the go standard library and we're going to say name is equal to name value is equal to message and then we are going to deploy this cookie so we're going to say HTTP set cookie set cookie uh, W and then C and this will deploy our cookie we need to encode our message we need to call our function encode on message as the value so what we're basically doing here is we are making an instance of HTTP cookie in which case the name is our string that we're passing in here and then the value is our encoded version of the byte or the slice of bytes that we're passing through here and then we are putting that into the uh, user's browser then we are going to create a mess uh, a function called get message and this is going to be taking the HTTP response writer the HTTP request and the name of string type and it's going to output a byte and an error so we need to get the cookie that exists on the browser so we're going to call r dot 
cookie and we're going to put the name in here. And we're going to say that this is equal to C comma ERR. So now we need to do some error handling. So if error is not equal to nil, then we will use a switch statement on error. And this switch statement will have a case of error no cookie. And if the case is error no cookie, then we will return nil and nil. And then we will have a default case in which we return nil and error. The next thing we need to do is we need to decode the cookie value that we got. So we need to call decode and we're going to call, we're going to say value comma error equals decode. And we're going to pass in C dot value. Now you got to remember that our C here is a instance of cookie, so it has a name and a value. Then of course we need to handle the error here. If error is not equal nil, return nil and error. And finally we need to create another cookie. And this cookie is going to basically time out the original cookie. So we're going to say, okay, HTTP.cookie. We're going to say the name is the same name. Then we're going to set the max age. We're going to set that to negative one. And then we're going to set expires. And we're going to use our time library. So time unix. And then we're going to pass in zero and one. And this will make it so that the cookie only lasts for a second or actually less than a second and then just expires. So now we just need to put this cookie onto the browser. So set the cookie and we're going to pass in w and dc. And then finally we are going to return our value add nil for our error. And that does it for our function here. So we are creating a new flash. So we need to create also a new HTML file. So this file is going to be called flash.html. And inside this file, we are going to create a template. We will say define flash. And inside of it, we will have a div with a class of alert, alert, danger. So we're using a uh, bootstrap class called alert alert danger. This will make the box red. And then inside of this, we will have a print F and then percent S, and then we will have a period at the end. Now that period will take in whatever uh, variable that we pass to our execute template function. So we do not have to specify the variable in this case because we're not uh, putting the variable in from a structure. So then we can just say end to end our actual block here. So now we need to import this um, block into our go.html file here. So we want it between the container and where the form starts. We could say uh, template flash and then a period. But the problem with this is that it will try to render the uh, flash template every single time, which we do not want. So instead, we're going to say block flash period and then we're going to say end. So basically if we're not rendering it with flash.html it will just render nothing here and it will render like the normal page as normal but if we do render flash.html it will render that in this area here. And we're at, we actually did the same thing here with our index.html see we're bringing in our main body here inside of this block here and uh, if we have no main body it would just render our normal page without a main body so now we need to decide where we want to dispatch these messages from so for one let's do it from our example page so we already have an if username is uh, not empty uh, execute the template so we can work off of this and we can say if the, username, if the username is an empty string, then we will uh, throw back a, a message. So we'll say set message, and then we'll pass in w and the name of our message, which will be message. So this will be the name of the cookie. And then we will pass in a slice of bytes, and we will say, please log in first. So if a user tries to get to uh, the inner page without logging in, they will see this message. We also, of course, need to redirect 
back to our uh, index page and there we go and this should basically what it'll do is you try to go to the example page it will automatically redirect you back to the login page and it will say on top please log in first we can also implement our messages here as well so if we enter in a name or a password that uh, is an empty string we can say something like username or password field are empty and then we will do one here as well so this is asking if our user exists inside of our database so if the user doesn't exist inside of the database we also want a message to throw back so let's say please sign up or enter a valid username and password so now we need to actually implement it so that it will th throw out these messages in our index page. So to do this we're going to get our message here at the first line so we're going to say msg comma underscore equals get message and inside of here we're going to pass in wr and then we're going to pass in the name of the messages which is going to be message. Now this is why all of our cookies have the same name message and then we can say if msg does not equal nil so we create a new template so we'll say parse files base.html index.html we also want our main.html of course and we're going to put in our flash.html as our fourth file and then we are going to execute this template so we're going to say error equals template.execute template and then we're going to pass in w base and then instead of u we're going to pass in msg so this will be the variable that we're passing through rather than passing through a struct of user. So then this part here will be wrapped in an else clause. So let's do that real quick. And there we go. So that should do it. Let's run all of this and see what we've got. We need to run all four files now. So we need to run main, data, cookie, and flash. So here is our login page. And if I just hit submit, now we have our little message popping up and it says username or password field are empty and if I reload this box should go away so now if I just type in random characters this is obviously a username and password that are not in our database we have a different message please sign up and enter a valid username or password so that's nice and if we try to go to our example page it will redirect us and say please log in first and all of these messages will go away as soon as you refresh the page because they are quote unquote one time flash messages and also because we are deleting the cookie as soon as we get the message out anyway guys I hope you saw how we can create cookies and how we can use them to our advantage at least even in a very uh, simple but aesthetic way anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial Feel free to subscribe and like, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment. And of course, as always, if you dislike the video, go ahead and dislike it. Throw in as many derogatory comments as you want. Anyway, have a good holiday.